Hello, I'm Professor Matthew Rotella, and in this tutorial I'm going to be giving an overview of the uh, shader that I built for the TCAN. Basically, I just made the uh, the two-hour step-by-step detailed how-to on how I did each, uh, uh, each part, each map for the shader. Uh, but that was two hours, and that's kind of unapproachable, so I figured I'd make a more condensed... Uh, less detailed overview of the shader. So I'll go through a brief explanation of each map and how exactly to plug that into your uh, into your shader. So first up, I'll go into Hypershade, which I, you can see I got both of my shaders laid out complete here. But uh, let's let's start anew. Shader, AI standard surface. And I'll name this, you know, like T, uh, I like to do like camel casing with shaders, T can two. All right, so, so to begin with, uh, we have our diffuse color, our base color, which uh, we got right, or, uh, right here, base color. Uh, that's the map that we're gonna be looking at first. So that's this here. I got, you know, my brushed metals all in here. I got my grunge, my barcode, my uh, price tags, leftover schmutz, uh, my logos, uh, my words, the, the lines, all that. This is my base diffuse color. Uh, it's all getting plugged in. Uh, this is where all just like the color from my different uh, details is going to be coming in. And... Yeah, like I said, I'm going to put that right here into the color. So I'll click on this checker box, file, click on this folder to select it. In this case, I got my base color with grunge. I'll hit open. And then just with the base color attached to your, uh, attached to your model, you should get a result that looks similar to this. And then this is my painted base color for my lid. I'll just be looking at the maps for the uh, the can base as opposed to both the base and the lid like I did in the other tutorial. And all right, so that's what we're looking at just with the base color. So next up, the next big step is going to be addressing your metalness, which if you just turn the metalness to one, you'll get a result that looks like this. Uh, if I were to just go into my shader and turn the metalness to one, leaving everything else the same, you'll get a result that looks uh, very similar to this. Um, next up, uh, though, we're going to want to address our specular color. And uh, in general, if I were to uh, look at the... Uh, If I were to look at the metalness section in the base documentation for the standard surface shader, uh, in general you can see with each of these colors, uh, with the metal, uh, the specular color is a similar proportion to these three numbers, but just higher. So uh, for my metal sections, what I did, uh, because only you're really gonna only going to have a specular color. Uh, it, with really metallic objects, which the can is, which, uh, so I basically just got a brightness and contrast and just boosted the brightness a bunch uh, to bring my specular color up for all of these parts. However, I did have, if I just make a layer and fill it with black, I do have this defining all of my grunge to have a specular color of white because anything non-metallic you're going to want to just have a specular color of white so I have a clipping mask defining that that's filled with white. Uh, so all of my grunge and my barcode sticker and stuff like that, that is a color of white uh, where uh, my metallic stuff has a boosted uh, whatever my base color is. So let's hook that into this shader which I'll put that into my specular color. Uh, 
specular color adjusted PNG. That's this guy. And the change there is likely going to be pretty subtle. It's going to go from something like this to just something like that. Uh, yeah, not super obvious, but uh, but but, it could, it, but I think it's definitely better uh, personally. And okay, then moving along with uh, yeah, which like Runge is painted in this one and everything like that. Uh, moving along, I want to address the uh, metalness map because uh, that's going to be the next big one. Uh, because basically, all of our uh, like all of our grunge that's on our object, we don't want our uh, hold on. This one doesn't have the grunge, but yeah, all of our grunge that's on our object, we don't want our grunge to appear to be very metallic because it's really like dust and dirt, and dust and dirt isn't made out of metal, at least not typically. Uh, so uh, we need a metalness map to help break up. Uh, how our surfaces, how metallic our surface looks. So my metalness map looks like this. Basically, the way it functions is just that uh, uh, most of our can is fully metallic, so that means most of our map is going to be white. So I just filled the map with white uh, because anywhere it's white, it will appear fully metallic. And then anywhere where I want it to have less metalness, which you can see I uh, use the clipping mask again to include my grunge and my barcode because I don't want my barcode paper to look like it's made out of metal. So I have black there because black has a pixel value of zero and therefore will give a metalness of zero in my map. Where over here has a pixel value of one because it's white. So it will have a uh, uh, one uh, full metalness uh, in that section of my map. Similarly, like my fingerprints aren't metal and things like that. So, uh, moving along. Uh, so I got to plug in my metalness map. So I'll click on the checkerboard, go to file, select my file, and there's my metalness map. I'll hit open. And now there's one problem with how it's attaching this by default. Uh, by default, it's attaching it to my al alpha, which this image, since it's all matted to either have a pixel value that is all white with no alpha or all black with no alpha, uh, it, you're going to see no change uh, with it uh, inserted as I've painted it. So there's one of two things you can do to have your metalist mat show up. Either you can click this checkbox, which is... Uh, it's located if you click on the file node, you can click this checkbox, alpha is luminance, where you can see that difference is coming through, which will use your luminance channel, so your black to white, as your alpha, and then that will make this work. Or, what you can do, because basically the problem is that it won't accept just this out color input. And the reason for that is because it only accepts one channel at a time, where out color is three. Uh, but I can break this out with this drop down and plug in just my R, G, or B. Uh, if it is truly grayscale, R, G, and B should all be the same value. So it doesn't really matter which. But yeah, I can hook it up like that or uh, plugging in any of these three into metalness and it should function. Or I can leave it hooked in like it is by default with the out alpha, but I need to check in alpha is luminance. So. Moving along, now my metalness should be functioning, and that'll break up my material a lot. So here it is pre-metalness map, and then post-metalness map, where now all of this dirt is uh, yeah, breaking up my surface, and it's making like my top look more dull and, uh, and less metallic and things like that. And it's uh, allowing things like this, like the water stains to show through and allows my dirt to show through more because it's not all just getting lost as being one metallic mass. Now it's all broken up. And again here, if I didn't have the metalness map, this would appear 
uh, like almost chrome like in areas where it's white but since it's mapped to be black it shows through as being a totally different uh, substance because it's paper okay so, so that's my metal in this map in action you can see some of my fingerprints and stuff like that showing through which that's nice okay and next up we're going to move into uh, specular roughness which uh, uh, which you want all the dirt uh, to have a higher roughness value than that of uh, the metal uh, so all the fingerprints the the grunge the barcode like all that should have a higher roughness than the metal uh, and you know lower roughness means you get more mirror like and higher roughness means you get more dull as you get higher um, so that means my roughness map should look something like this where I have a darker value for everything that is metallic uh, I believe I filled this with either like a so like I just kind of went into my color here uh, my saturation at zero and then I just filled this with either like a 35 or like 45 percent gray something like that th th I think I think I did 35 or 40 actually with well actually I can just color pick yeah it's 35 percent gray is what I uh, ended up settling on so I filled the whole map with 35 percent gray and then again I used a clipping mask uh, to make parts that should be that should have a higher specular roughness uh, and then I filled this with a lighter percent gray I, I think this is uh, like yeah like a 60 percent gray so since this color is lighter than this color these areas will have a higher specular roughness than my metal um, okay so uh, with that going over I'll plug in my roughness map so again I'll click on that checker checker box I'll hit file image name and then go to my specular roughness I had quite a few iterations where I went through different values until I hit roughnesses I was happy with now again uh, specular roughness is a single channel input so by default it'll hook it up to your alpha so in order to make this work as I have it painted I need to do alpha is luminance and now there's uh, yeah so then the specular roughness will come in and this will again help break up your surface in those areas and just help those uh, like all that grunge stand out more and have this really like dull surfaces where the grunge exists but uh, lastly, there is the bump map to sort of break up the surface and bring this grunge off the surface, which I could have done this a little bit better, but I, I, I rushed the bump map a little bit. But in general, this is what you want to go for. I'll show you my bump map is here. So the way a bump map functions is a 50% gray is going to be no bump. Uh, so a 50% gray... Uh, you'll see no change in the surface and then anything darker than 50% gray uh, will be an indent and then anything lighter will become raised so uh, for the most part uh, most of my surface I don't have a bump on it which I could put my uh, brushed metal texture into the bump to have that show up but it would have to be very subtle uh, but uh, but for the most part it's mostly 50% gray and then my scratches are of course scratched into the metal so my scratches are darker than that 50% gray because that will turn them into indents and then all of my dirt my fingerprints my watermarks that all sits on top of the surface so that's lighter than 50% gray which again will bump it out same thing goes for my sticker smuts and for my barcode sticker and uh then I'll plug that into here, which gets plugged into my geometry, bump mapping, file, 
uh, by default, it's going to put it at a bump depth of 1, which is going to be like way too high. You likely want it at 0.1 or perhaps even lower. And then I'll uh, click on this file node to insert my file. And there's my bump open. And uh, you'll see that by default with your bump map, it connects it to the alpha and by default, alpha is luminance is already checked on there. Um, and that will likely function pretty well. Uh, and then that will give you results similar to this, which I definitely want to mix things up a little bit where like marker, I don't want that coming off my surface this hard. And then uh, certain things like that. But I think this angle looks really nice. I think this grit really comes through exactly how I wanted it to based off of my reference and things like that. Uh, but yeah, and then this is coming off the surface nicely. Same thing here. Uh, yeah, generally looking pretty good. Oh, that was okay. But yeah, and that so, so concludes my shader setup, my shader setup overview which I, I can double check my bump value to see what kind of thing I ended up settling on. Well, I used an AI bump node, which you can find in your uh, utilities in the Arnold section. There's an AI bump 2D, and I used that, and I did a bump height of 0.1. Uh, but uh, yeah, overall, that's that's it. That's that's the general overview of how to hook up your shader with all of my maps, uh, uh, controlling and driving all of my more important attributes. And then uh, that's that, which I can show you it uh, rendered in like a few different light setups. And you can see how the lighting angles really change what details come out. This one looks really nice with the way that this sort of grit is looking. But, or you can put it on a backdrop and that'll look nice and clean. But we're all, that's everything. Uh, I hope that was helpful, informative, and I uh, hope you have a nice night, nice day, nice week. Nice life, what have you. Signing off.